Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our Decades mini-series. In this week's show, we explore the wide range of tension and nip controls seen in the wider web world. Knowing where you sit in these ranges can tell us much about the challenges that you can expect. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Everyone in my audience should already be familiar with the TNTs of winding, such as taught by my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 people. The T stands for ordinary web tension, such as entering the wind-up station. This wound roll tightness knob is available on all winders. The N stands for nip, between a roller and a winding roll. The roller may be called different things, such as lay-on roller, rider roller, pack roller, drum, and so on. Some winders have no nip rollers. Most have one, and a few have as many as three. The T is shorthand for Center Surface Wind Torque Differential. Very few winders have this tightness knob because it requires two motors, one on the roll and one on the roller, with all of the attendant mechanical and control costs and complexities. Of course, my students will also call that the S stands for speed. However, the S is lowercase because only a few winding systems are speed dependent. We will have more to say about this in next week's show, Web 201.76D, so stay tuned to this all web handling channel. Speed dependence occurs when the web is simultaneously not slow, not rough, and not narrow. In short, where air entrainment comes into play, as can be calculated, measured, or modeled in any number of ways. Of course, my students will also recall that the web's MD modulus has at least as much effect on wound roll tightness as do the TNT's winding. However, did you know that there are also TNT's for the web? Well, you might be excused if you haven't heard, because I only made that up a few years ago. The tension and nip and speed controls are the same as with winding, so no new concepts here. All we add is two remaining important concerns. The first new control is temperature, or moisture in the case of paper webs. Web processing and properties are often quite sensitive to temperature and moisture, as well as temperature and moisture non-uniformities. The second new control is path control, often called guiding. This is the oldest of the web handling sciences at the PhD level. You might have now noticed something in common between the web and winding TNTs. That is, tension and nip, which are the focus of this week's show. Determining the best web tension for any web and drive zone is a process of three steps, each giving progressively better answers, but with additional effort required at each new step. The first step is the simplest and usually good enough to design machines. That is, most webs like to run in a range of 10 to 25% of their MD strip tensile strength. To this, all we do is add quality statements, such as holding tension to 5% of set point during steady state and a bit more during special challenges, such as speed ramps. The second step is to adjust the tensions within that range to best avoid either high or low tension defects. The third step is the only way to use the word best or optimum 
and that is when you have both high and low tension defects present at the same time. A not so unusual occurrence. In that case, you must use economics to determine the most profitable setting for tension, nip, temperature, or any other specification for that matter. Since an ideal tension depends largely on strength, and because strength varies widely in the web world, you have more than a hundredfold difference in tension that is common on machines. At the low end, as an example, you might run 0.1 pounds per inch on creped toilet tissue paper. More commonly, web tensions are around one pound per inch, give or take a factor of two. However, there are some very, very heavy materials where tensions might be 10 times bigger still. Nips vary even more in the web world. Again, tissue is at the low end, perhaps 0.1 pounds per inch for winding. Most webs are wound with nips on the order of 1 to 10 pounds per inch. Laminating is 10 times heavier still. Heavy forming nips abound in certain applications such as paper and rubber. Ordinary dollar bills are printed at loads exceeding 2 tons per inch of width. So much so that the print cylinder is engraved as a parallelogram to allow for web expansion under such crushing loads. I'm not sure how heavy metal rolling nips are, but they are no doubt quite heavy. Let me close with a major area of neglect on almost all machines. That is carelessness and sloppiness of nip design and maintenance. By carelessness, I mean the lack of calibration of nip load in engineering units. We would never allow such carelessness with tension or speed or temperature. So why do we do that for such an important control as nip? By sloppiness, I mean letting mechanical friction be more than 5% either by maintenance or, much more likely, by design. Indeed, few even bother to measure friction, in which case calibration and quality are somewhat meaningless. Take heart. However, I have shown designers how to do much, much better in my Web 201.29 A through G series. I hope you have enjoyed this episode on Tension and Nip in this decade's mini-series. Stay tuned for next week's show where we will discuss a most common web handling parameter, that is, web speed. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.